Hello and welcome to Nithrania Game Club. My name is Branis Alberec and you're watching Gaming in a Nutshell, the series of videos designed to teach how to play new board games. Today we're going to learn how to play a game which is about some spectacular performances. It's called Magnificent and here's how it plays. First, take the number of dice based on the number of players in the game. Then roll all those dice. After that, place them into this main tent area. These are master cards. For a first game, separate all the cards with these Roman numbers 1 to 4. Then shuffle all the remaining master cards and place the deck on the corresponding space on the game board. Then in a 2 or 3 player game, draw first 3 cards and place them face up on the game board. And in a 4 player game, draw 4 cards. Take all these trainer tiles and again shuffle them, place them on the game board and in a 2 or 3 player game draw and place 3 tiles face up and in a 4 player game draw 4 tiles. Then there are 3 wagons in the game and they correspond to these 3 tracks. Place each wagon on this starting space of the track of the corresponding color. Then place one tent face up on each of these 5 spaces on all of the tracks. Put the remaining tent back into the box. Then take these poster cards and set aside these starting posters. Shuffle all the remaining posters, place the deck face down to this spot and this time, regardless of the number of players in the game, draw first four cards face up. Then each player takes a player board. For a first game, place it with this A side face up. For the advanced game, each player can choose whether to use the A or B side of the player board. B sides have different starting resources and the placement of these bonuses. Then, for a first game, look at this Roman number on your player board and take the four starting master cards with the corresponding Roman number in the bottom left corner. If you play with less than four players, shuffle the remaining starting master cards into the master deck. Then shuffle the deck of these starting posters and deal each player one random card. Put all the remaining starting posters back into the box. Then each player chooses a color, takes two heads of that color and a scoring marker, and then the starting resources, which is one gem of each color, six coins and one trainer marker of the same color. Then randomly determine the starting player who places their head token to the first place of the performance track, followed by other players in a clockwise direction. Then the first player in a player order has to take one coin from his personal supply and give it to the player who is last in the turn order. Then in a two or three player game, randomly draw three more trainer tiles. In a four player game, you would draw four tiles. Now, starting with the last player in a player order and continuing back to the first player, each player chooses one of those trainer tiles. Place this trainer tile onto the leftmost space on your player board. In a two player game, the remaining trainer tile would be shuffled back into the trainer tiles pile. The game of Magnificent is played over three rounds. In each round, players will take exactly four turns. Starting with the first player and then continuing clockwise, each player takes one turn. On your turn, you do exactly three steps. First, you choose a die from the main tent. You can choose any die you want and you have to place it on one of the vacant master cards. Each master card has a bonus depicted which you can use one time any time during that turn. Since you take four turns each round, eventually you will have one die on each of your master cards at the end of each round. Then in the second step, you have to determine your power. Your power is equal to the value of the die you took this turn, plus the value of all dies of the same color that you took in previous turns this round. You will use this power in the third step when performing action. You can further increase your power by spending gems of the same color as the die you took this turn or by discarding white gems which are wild and can be used as any color and for each gem you discard you increase your power by 2. When you take the clear die it's a wild die and you can change the color of the die to any color immediately. So if I would consider it to be orange right now 
My initial power would be 3 plus 3 is 6. The new color of that clear die, orange in this case, also applies to spending gems for increasing the power. So, because I made it orange, I can also spend these orange gems to increase my power. Obviously, I can still spend this wild as well. However, in your subsequent turns, the clear die becomes clear again. So, if I would take another orange die, my initial power would be only 4 plus 3. The clear die doesn't count anymore. So, after taking a die and determining your power, you move on to the third step, in which you can do only one of the following actions. You can either build, travel, or perform shows. When you build, you expand your camp with these camp tiles. First, based on your power, you have to choose the build level. You can only choose the level up to the power of your action. So, let's say with the power of 11, I could choose any of these four options. The large square indicates that you can build one of these larger tiles, and the small square indicates that you can build one of these smaller tiles. So let's say with the build level 9, I can build one large and one small tile. You can only build the tiles of the same color as the color of the die you took this turn. First tile you build can be placed anywhere in your camp. If you cover these bonus spaces, Take those bonuses immediately. All subsequent tiles must be placed so that they share at least one border with another camp tile. So they cannot touch just diagonally. They literally have to be adjacent. When you place tiles, you can rotate and flip them any way you want. If you build more than one tile during the same turn, you may take and build them in any order you want. When you take the travel action, move the wagon of the same color as the die you took this turn in a clockwise direction. You can move it up to number of spaces equal to your power, which means you don't have to use the full power. Anytime you pass or land on one of these gem tiles, take that gem immediately. You place the gems in this storage area and you can have maximum three gems of the same color. For each gem that would exceed your limit, take one coin instead. To take one of these tents, you have to end your movement exactly on that space and cannot move any further that turn. So if I move this wagon over to this space, I would take two orange gems, one purple gem, and then I can take this tent. When I do, I can place the tent on one of the empty spaces on my player board and take the depicted bonus immediately. Notice that you already have one tent pre-printed, so you can only take four tents over the course of the game. If you already have four, you cannot take any more. After you pick up tents from these travel tracks, these poster symbols become available. Similar to gems, when you pass over or land on the poster tile, you can either take one of these face-up poster cards or draw the one from top of the deck. When you take one of those face-up cards, immediately replenish the display with the new card. Place the newly acquired poster card into one of these empty spaces above your player board. If all those five spaces are already occupied and you take another poster card, you have three options. You can either discard one of those cards and replace it with a new card, or you can simply discard the new card, or not take the poster card at all. When you take the perform action, the color of the die is completely irrelevant, only your power. When you take the perform action first time in the round, take the head token from the game board and place it on the empty space on this performance track, matching your power or to any empty space below. So let's say with the power of 11, I can take the head and place it either on this 10 space or 8, 6 and so on. If this is your second action in the round, take the head from your player area and again place it on the performance track following the same rules. Now when you place the head on a performance track, the number in the bottom left corner indicates how many shows can you perform. Your shows are represented by these posters. You can only perform a show if there is a tent directly below that poster. 
Each poster shows one or more camp tiles and in addition to that, some posters also have these gem symbols. To perform the show, you must have those camp tiles in your camp area and you also have to discard the depicted gems. However, each camp tile counts toward only one of the shows. In addition, some of these tent tiles also have a requirement to discard one of the gems. So, when you meet the requirements and discard any gems if required, you successfully perform the show, gain all the benefits listed on a poster card and also on the tent below that poster, so in this case it's 9 points total, take the poster card, flip it face down and place it next to your player board. Tents and camp tiles remain in their places. After that, you may freely reorganize your posters in this poster area. These trainers are very important in this game. On your turn, you can use any number of these trainers by placing them either on these trainer spaces on your player board or on the trainer spaces on the game board in this area. You can find the description of all these trainer spaces in the rulebook. At the end of your turn, take all the trainer markers from your player board and also from the game board and place them somewhere next to the main tent area. These trainer markers will stay here until the end of the round. When all players have taken 4 turns, the round is over. Now perform the following steps. First, you need to pay for your dice. Calculate the total value of the dice of the same color and pay coins equal to the highest value. So in our example, orange dice have a value of 7, so I need to pay 7 coins. In addition, pay the full value of all the clear dice. So here, that's another 5 coins. If you wouldn't have enough coins, you would lose 1 point for each missing coin in the first round, 2 points for each missing coin in the second round and 3 points for each missing coin in the third round. If necessary, you can even move your marker below the zero space. Then each player who has both heads on the performance track takes the one which is the lowest and returns it back to the player area. Then starting with the player who is on top of this performance track and then continuing in the player order, each player chooses the combination of MasterCard and the Trainer tile. Place the master card next to your existing master cards and the trainer tile to the next available space. In a two player game only, when first player chooses a combination, then if there is at least one empty space between those two head figures, the first player may discard one combination for free and the second player only takes the remaining combination. Now each player has to score one of their five master cards. It can be any of those cards, even the one that was just acquired. Mark the victory points on the scoring track and then permanently discard the card. Again, you can find the explanation of the card scoring in the rulebook. Finally, return the trainer markers back to their owners, replenish the main display of the master cards and only in the second round replenish the display of the trainer tiles as well. Slide all the head figures down and the new starting player for the new round is the player whose head figure is on this first position. But don't forget, even though this is the starting player, the game continues in a clockwise direction. And re-roll all the dice. At the end of the third round, the game will be over. Each player will score each of these four remaining master cards, but score half the value of each card rounded down. Notice that each card has a limitation of the maximum number of victory points scored from that card. So in this example, you can turn one coin into three victory points maximum seven times for 21 victory points. Then score one victory point for each five coins remaining and score four victory points for each of these nine rectangular areas that are fully covered. You may now use your remaining gems to cover the spaces which are not covered by your camp tiles to help get another rectangular area fully covered. Sum up all the points and whoever has the most points is the winner.
And that's it. That's how we play Magnificent. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be really happy to answer your questions. If you like the series, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.